from there. So today, the hype is in NFTs. So we are jumping into the NFTs and the blockchain space of the smart contracts. Smart. So NFTs is a, is a really nice thing today. It opened up the world for artists at the beginning, you know, music artists later on. But it's going to be commercialized to become anything. If I want to sign that contract between me and you, for example, it's going to be on NFT in the future. Enjoy the AI Nerd AI with Attitude YouTube channel. Welcome to AI Nerd AI with Attitude. And I am once again joined, it is my honor actually, to be joined again with the DX Talks podcast founder, Rudy Shashani. I just like saying his last name, Shashani. Follow Shashani. He's awesome. Um, <laughs> wait, listen, they talk about crypto, NFTs, blockchain, and the most boring of the three, digital transformation. Actually, that's actually kind of cool too. Rudy, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. Hopefully this, this episode will be kind of uh, cool. <laughs> I hope so too, because God knows I need it. No, you know, here, I'm going to share a little coffee with you. Would you like some? Would you like a little coffee? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, yeah. grab it. You know, I'll just drink it for you too. That's fine. <laughs> I love coffee. How much is too much? Let's just start with that question. Is it two pots too much during the day or three pots? There was, there was a joke. Was it two pots in an hour? How much do you drink from eight to five, two pots? Was that in an hour or in a day, you know? <laughs> I don't know, honestly, it's just endless supply. At some point though, my body says stop and says pick up water and drink it. And, and so I'm not quite there yet. It is, it is, it is 90% water, no? Right, exactly. It's the other 10% I have to worry about. What are you currently working on? What's currently the passion? Tell me about what your current passion is. What, what are you really excited about? We follow trends and hypes and everything as everybody does. But in the same time, we try to find that business perspective or giving value to our users and people that are really in there. So today, the hype is in NFTs. So we are jumping into the NFTs and the blockchain space of the smart contracts. Smart. So NFTs is a, is a really nice thing today. It opened up the world for artists at the beginning, you know, music artists later on. But it's going to be commercialized to become anything. If I want to sign that contract between me and you, for example, it's going to be on NFT in the future. I will always accept Bitcoin as payment, just throwing it out there. What are the top three things we should know about NFTs, including what does NFT stand for? Uh, NFT is, uh, I'm not going to go into technicalities because it can get a little bit technical. It's an unfungible tokens, i.e. it means that it's something you cannot exchange it. Let's call it the Mona Lisa. You know, you can take a photo of it, you can copy it and so on. But in the end of the day, that Mona Lisa painting that is sitting in the Louvre can never be exchanged to something else. If I give you a hundred dollars and then you can give me two fifties, that is exchangeable. Whereas that piece of art or that contract that I'm giving with you, it's something very unique. So if you gave me the top three trends on NFTs, what would the one, two, three be? The trends is uh, to try to create as a creator some uh, NFTs related to a project. This is a first trend because everybody now is trying to do it, to try to succeed, maybe to fund their project. The second trend in NFTs is really trying to technically making them into a business perspective. You know, we want there, we want the hype and everything, but how can we take that into a really a business perspective? Uh, and the third uh, trend is definitely the investment or selling and reselling or what they call it, flipping. You know, because you can buy some art now and then maybe sleep on it a little bit. And then in a month or two, it will become much more, you know, 10x, 20x, 100x and so on. So uh, those are three things that are today really in the space of, of NFTs that are billions and billions of dollars being spent on this. So let's peel the onion a little bit on that. So tell me a little more about NFTs. How do you create them? How do you sell yeah. or distribute them? And what does it cost to, to do that? Now we need to learn about gas fees. <laughs> also, there's gas fees in a digital world. Uh, it depends what blockchain you want to work on. Was it Ethereum or Cardano or any other Polygon and so on? Uh, let's say, let's to simplify it, we go with the most famous one is OpenSea. So OpenSea is a platform where you can host your art. But to be able to sell that art, you need to transfer some Ethereum to your MetaMask wallet. Okay. So let's say you have a wallet with Binance, which has some Ethereum there and you want to start selling your art so you transfer ethereum from that wallet to metamask wallet once it is in that metamask wallet you open your OpenSea. you can see your funds now 
they are funded and you put it on that uh, platform and you have to pay a fee initial fee of uh, 0.1 ethereum to be able to uh, start selling and later on you can put the price was it on bidding perspective or on a, a flat fee price that you want to sell also that art and you can start selling and to be able to do that you have to pay the gas fee of ethereum because that ethereum network which is the most famous part charges transaction fees and today they are running between uh, 20 and 100 dollars on a bad day let's say the ai nerd youtube channel the ai nerd brand wants to create an nft to yeah. for the purpose of creating interest in that what you described like a ticket what is it though you'd sell? Just you'd be part of an NFT as a fraction? Like, you know, what would what would be the value of a, a brand saying, hey, if you're a contributor to our platform or if you go on the YouTube channel, you get to be part of this NFT. Am I thinking of it incorrectly or how would you leverage those for the purposes of maybe marketing or improving, uh, you know, word of mouth exposure, you know, et that's, cetera? That's what famous brands are doing today, you know? Was it uh, Nike, Adidas, or, you know, you name them. Pepsi, McDonald's is opening his own shop now. They are selling many things now on the NFT space also. Let's say for any of your viewers, and then they want to go into that perspective and business, uh, it could be a ticket to maybe uh, more interviews, or it could be a ticket to that club or participants, or to that academy of trainings that possibly you can provide, or it could be to, uh, you know, exclusive, this is where things get more technical on a marketing perspective, exclusive club of network of, uh, you know, marketers. So if you hold that NFT ticket, which you bought, let's say, for 100, 200, 300 dollars, whichever, because the price can, uh, you know, uh, fluctuate based on the Ethereum price, that means you bought a ticket to that uh, exclusive club that you are trying to create. You offer trainings, you offer interviews, you offer, you know, uh, whatever you, you will be offering. Uh, maybe you will be offering physical products, maybe you'll be offering digital products. So you hold that ticket to whatever is really coming for the future. Part of that network, because in the end of the day, the power of me participating in a network, you know, it has a big power. So if I want in on that, that's my ticket. Would you create multiple NFTs or do you create a single one with multiple tickets? No, it's multiple NFTs, you know, uh, each NFT is unique. So it doesn't have to be in terms of art perspective unique, or you can sell the same NFT, you know, with multiple bidders on it. But in the end of the day, if they hold that one ticket or that one NFT, it's the same value. Depends how you want. Maybe you have subscription levels of in terms of entry level uh, network uh, group. Maybe you have advanced network group. You can do, you know, different types of things or you can do the general public one or it depends on how you're going to strategize and how you're going to maybe uh, also market that NFT into perspective so it becomes more valuable. So we're creating that value of that network, we're creating the value of holding that NFT, we're creating maybe uh, access to, uh, you know, famous club. Uh, depending where you are in geographical location, I was, you know, a consultant on uh, a yacht club NFT. So uh, they have 700 tickets only. It depends how you're going to give the value of it. So this is the thing that I think it's tricky for people. You have 700 tickets to one NFT or 700 NFTs to one of them. 700 NFTs. 700 you could... yachts. Actually, you're buying 700 yachts, different yachts with uh, special traits. Maybe you have the same yacht, but the flag of it is country of X. And then the brand that creates that, they don't own it but they are the brand that's associated with that NFT above it, if you will. If you think you can, one brand, as you describe McDonald's, let's say, or even AI Nerd, they could have multiple NFTs that people have bought and they've stayed within this network. They're, how do you keep someone though from taking, in, in the example you gave, from reselling it to someone you don't want them to resell it to? They can resell it. That's the beauty of NFTs. That's the beauty of that smart contract, let's say. But they will hold that ticket always. And you get 10, 20%, 15%, depending on your initial contract. So you have a benefit of reselling that NFT. Board Ape made only $50 million in Board Ape resale. I'm not gonna lie, if someone gives me $50 million, I'm just gonna shut it down and probably play golf. And that's it. I'm gonna literally I'll take, just- I'll go with you, I'll go with you. Just hit the power <laughs> button, I'm done. Thank you for joining. Well, that's, that's, that's called a rug pool. I'm on board for that. All right, what's one thing a person on any topic should never do.
I'm gonna give two ideas. Don't do a rug pull. So don't create a project, a hype and everything and sell and then disappear. Uh, now, on a personal perspective, uh, well, it depends where you are. Uh, if you're in the in the region, in the Middle East region, you know, don't talk to certain people. Don't touch the sit local citizens or try to remove their cape or whatever. What's one thing a person should always do on any topic? Always, always, always knock a door. Especially if being in that entrepreneurial spirit, we tend to fear that we are gonna be refused before even knocking that door. So uh, what's what's a refusal? It's a simple answer is no. You know, if you have an idea, uh, pop it in, it's either gonna say no, and guess what? You have better chances in saying yes. So always knock it once, twice, three times, and then if it doesn't work, even knock the door. That was deeper than I expected. I'm thank you for that. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to chew on that a bit. Would you prefer to own a camel on a beach, or one Bitcoin? I'm gonna go for the answer that is uh, unorthodox, which is a camel. From different perspective, you know. Imagine you're uh, on a famous beach in Dubai, and then you have a camel, and then you you just go there, and you're gonna become the the man of of that time, and then everybody gonna be coming for uh, those photos priceless photos, priceless experience, even though I'm losing, you know, nowadays $34,000, but that unorthodox way of possibly presenting your brand or presenting something, it has a much, 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 much higher value than those money. Even though, you know, possibly Bitcoin will fly, it's bringing that special experience, special uh, memories and so on. Could you sell a camel as an NFT? Yes. What happens when the camel How? dies? But I can initially tell that it. camel exists and that has value. Yeah, as long as the camel, of course, it's alive. It's the same as medium of exchange, you know. But I'm getting that specific camel. You know, there's no two camels. If you wanna, if you wanna buy the most uh, beautiful camel, for example, and there is a competition for that, uh, that is a priceless camel. And if you put it on an NFT, that would be the biggest marketing stunt you can ever do, possibly. So yes, as long as he's alive and he's winning more uh, competitions. This NFT is very valid. I need you to do a shameless plug now. And I mean, get at it. Who, what, when, where, why, who should and should not contact you or listen to the podcast. Ready, go. We're available on at Rudy Shushani, R-U-D-Y-S-H-O-U, or DX Talks on our uh, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, brand new TikTok. And of course, all of the famous uh, podcasts. And now we're started with Anagami because the uh, it's focused on the Middle East and it was listed uh, last week on the NASDAQ in the US. So we're also trying to support everybody who is into crypto, NFTs, blockchain, digital transformation. Those are the, the people that we want. We want those leaders, especially those policy changers, those people that are doing good projects and trying to uh, you know, change the way uh, we understand technology. Because in my belief, blockchain is the future technology, is one of the future technologies. AI is the second one. Thank you for tying into my brand. And I appreciate you so much for coming on the AI Nerd AI with Attitude YouTube channel. Once again, Rudy, I hope 142 people at least watch this this time and enjoy it. But thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Thomas. It was a really pleasure and love you know, having chats with you. See you soon. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, turn on the notifications, give it a like, drop a comment below, and follow us on our social media pages. AI Nerd, AI with attitude.